Configure. Okay. Next. Print 10 times each value from 10, 10 I actually mean 10 multiplied by. Don't print the same value 10 times, okay? What I'm, my intention is 10 multiplied. Print 10 multiplied by each value from int number flux that is greater than five, okay? This is gonna give me an int number flux, which is greater than five, right? Get rid of the log here. But I don't want that. I want 10 times that. Of course, I can do system printl in times 10, but here's another way. You can do a map. Map of each element. I'm gonna do E times 10. So I'm gonna do a map, and this is gonna return a flux where each element is 10 times the individual element, and then I'm gonna subscribe to that, okay? You can see how simple this is. Now that you have this whole thing in your mind, this is basically just what you normally do with stream uh, programming, collection stream programming, but you have this new new paradigm and now you understand where the flux is being triggered, where the events are going and where you need to catch it, okay? And I'm gonna also ask a question which is gonna make a lot of sense and you will get this right after I ask this. Let me show you. So now here, what I'm gonna get back is, you know, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Wait until it gets to that. Yeah, so now 60 to 100. So I'm going to ask you if you can guess what gets printed when I do a dot log over here. It prints zero, sorry, one to 10, right? What gets printed when I do a dot log over here? It prints six to 10, yes. And what about when I do log here? Sixty to hundred, yes, because you're doing a log on a different flux here. This is a flux which is a result of this map, and that flux is only issuing sixty, seventy, eighty. It waits for a while, and then it issues sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, hundred. Okay, so you got it. Now you know what's going on here. Okay, next, print ten multiplied by. I'm gonna copy this here. Print 10 multiplied by each value from the int numbers flux for the first three elements, for the first three numbers that's emitted that's greater than five. Okay, can you think about it? Can somebody write that code in the chat? See if we can find this out. It's very similar to this one. 10 multiplied by each value from the int numbers. For the first three numbers, emitted that is greater than five exactly so i'm going to do this the wrong way let's see if we can catch this okay so i'm going to go okay this one i'm going to get this and then I'm going to do a dot takeoff three. Okay, fair enough. Now notice that the order is so important here because if I were to do this, if I'd put the map at the top, it wouldn't work because the filter condition is affected, right? Now everything is multiplied by 10. So every number is probably gonna clear this condition. So that's not gonna work. If I put the take at the top, that's also not gonna work because I'm getting the first three numbers and I'm only filtering those. So it's gonna go one, two, and three, and then it's gonna realize that none of them are above five. And that's at the end, after three is taken, it issues a completion event, and then none of this is gonna work, okay? So the take has to be only after the, it can be after the filter or after the map, but it cannot be before, okay? Like you're taking the first three elements, you can possibly put take over here and then map and then convert to 10. In this case, you're gonna be doing uh, six, seven, eight, and then that's gonna get converted to 60, 70, 80 in this flux. Or you can do over here, it's basically gonna take six, seven, you know, a 60, 70, 80, and then it's gonna take those three, right? Either way is fine. But again, I wanna highlight the importance of 
the position here. It's very similar to uh, how you would do streams as well. Like when you have a filter, you need to be aware of what the value is that you're getting, but that's basically how it works. Now, again, as you can see, I've told you this a hundred times, same programming model. There's nothing here that screams you're doing asynchronous reactive. All that is hidden in this guy is doing everything in the background. It could potentially be doing filter in a different thread and map in a different thread. Well, yeah, it depends on how, how it's implemented, but basically you're, you're not associated with that. You kind of have that abstraction, which is, which is great for us as programmers. You don't want to be worrying about that. Okay. Print each value from int numbers flux that's greater than 20. Print minus one if no elements are found. Okay. So basically, you want to do a filter, but then you have to find a way of handling an empty flux. Okay. So there is a way to do this. There is a me there is a, a method called default of empty. I'm just going to apply that. I haven't explained to you in this class, so you wouldn't know how to do this, but I'm going to be explaining it to you now. Okay. So this is how it works. There is a method called default of empty, which basically does what you expect it to do. So if, if the flux is empty, it's just going to default a value, right? So we have int number flux and you're going to check for items that are greater than 20. And um, there should be none because our count ends at ends at 10. Okay, so this is going to result in an empty um, stream, but you don't want an empty stream. You want to provide a default. Okay, so you provide dot default if empty. Okay, and I'm going to produce uh, minus one. I'm actually seeding a value into this flux, and it is going to go through the subscribe. Okay, again, again, you're not you're not blocking. You're not going out of the reactive paradigm. You're still in the reactive paradigm. There's going to give back a flux where if the flux is empty, it just substitutes with, with another flux, which returns just one element, which is the minus one. And then I'm going to subscribe to that thing. So let me run this. Now, again, as you can imagine, it is going to wait for the whole uh, flux, the completion event of this flux, right? Until that happens, it doesn't know if it's empty or not. So a default empty will essentially wait until the completion event, and then it emits an event. Again, it's not blocking, okay? It is basically triggering an event when that happens, okay? You're basically saying, when the completion event happens, if it hasn't triggered any events so far, put a minus one, okay? Uh, you still need the the key press thing here, otherwise it's, it's gonna just go. It's not blocking over here. I hope that makes sense. I 